Therapy Chat Podcast, episode 350. This is the Therapy Chat Podcast with Laura Reagan, LCSWC. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. And now, here's your host, Laura Reagan, LCSWC. This week's episode is sponsored by Therapy Notes, the number one rated electronic health record system available today. With live telephone support seven days a week, it's clear why Therapy Notes is rated 4.9 out of 5 stars on Trustpilot and has a 5 star rating on Google. Therapy Notes makes billing, scheduling, note taking, and telehealth incredibly easy. And now, for all you prescribers out there, Therapy Notes is proudly introducing ePrescribe. Use coupon code CHAT or click the link in the show notes to get two free months at therapynotes.com. Are you tired of running to the lobby to see if your next appointment has arrived? Would you like a more discreet, stress-free way for your clients to check in? Take a deep breath. The receptionist for iPad empowers your practice to create a zen-like check-in experience. This episode is sponsored by the receptionist for iPad. It's the highest rated digital check-in software for therapy offices and behavioral health clinics used by thousands of practitioners across the country. Start a 14-day free trial of the receptionist for iPad by going to thereceptionist.com slash therapy chat. And when you do, you'll also get your first month free when you sign up. Hi, welcome back to Therapy Chat. I'm your host, Laura Reagan, and today I'm talking to two people who I have known for about eight years, and they have been together and individually a major influence in my professional life and my entrepreneurship journey, and they have so much to teach. My guests today are Kelly and Miranda from ZinniMe. Kelly and Miranda are therapists, coaches, and experts in sustainable lives for therapists. And today we're talking about burnout, which is something that we've been covering pretty much through the summer. We've been talking about self-care, vicarious trauma, and we're talking about burnout as a systemic issue. Kelly and Miranda teach us in this episode about having an attuned relationship with the self as a therapist. Of course, this is something that we talk about often on Therapy Chat as well, but today I'm talking about my decision to stop working with clients. They share about how burnout might not be obvious to you, but people around you probably realize you have it even if you don't, and how we live in a system which is oppressive to the person And burnout comes from trying to do a good job. So it's not something to be ashamed of. It's it's a wound that comes from a desire to help. So we're going to cover self-advocacy as a therapist, using your body as a guide, discerning intuition from fear, whether or not burnout is permanent, how burnout mirrors a trauma response, and the concept of having a business you don't need to recover from. It's not a destination, it's an evolution. I loved talking with Kelly and Miranda today. They are the coaches who I learned from when I went into private practice. When I was first starting my practice and I had three other jobs, I did their course and it taught me everything I needed to know, including a lot of the mindset work needed to develop a private practice that you can thrive in. And I saw all the amazing things that the other members were doing. I realized there are so many different ways that we can serve as therapists and helping professionals. So I know you're going to love this conversation. It's filled with heart. They are so down to earth and relatable, but knowledgeable and wise. So let's dive right into my conversation on burnout with Kelly and Miranda. Hi, welcome back to Therapy Chat. I'm your host, Laura Reagan. And today I'm so happy to be speaking again with beloved teachers and mentors and friends, Kelly Higdon, LMFT, and Miranda Palmer, LMFT of Zinni Me. Kelly and Miranda, thank you so much for coming back to Therapy Chat today. I love hanging out with you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm such a great human and do so much for the world. So thanks for having us again. Oh, you're so sweet to say that. You're welcome. (laughs) So 
Today, we're going to talk about burnout, which is something that I know many people, therapists or not, are feeling lately. And I'm so grateful that you're out there talking about it the way you are, because it really resonates for me. So before we get into talking about burnout, let's just start off by if you too would be willing to let our audience know a little bit more about who you are and what Zinimi is. Yeah, we're two therapists that we've been together as business partners since 2000, I don't know, 10. 10. And our mission is really to impact mental health care in our society. And we do that through empowering private practice owners to build practices that are viable and that also give them a good life. I think mm-hmm. we don't believe in building a business at the expense of your well-being, but instead to enhance your well-being. And we know that at that intersection where therapists are really well taken care of and they're empowered to be their highest and best for their clients, that's where clinical outcomes yes. like go to this next level. And it makes such a big difference for our world when people get really good quality care. They don't have therapists that are falling asleep, that are forgetting what's happening in session, that haven't done documentation in six months, and that they have therapists who are there and present and attuned and can like, oh, like, oh, let me go read an article about that. Or, you know, I'm going to do a case consultation and have the budget to do that and that they're not kind of just doing the best going from thing to thing to thing, feeling like they're always, you know, just burnt to a crisp or just wrung out. I think a lot of people feel that way. And you can be a great, amazing therapist who is doing your highest and best. But if you are burnt out at some point, it's impacting your clients and or you, either your clients are going to feel it eventually or your body's going to shut down and you're not going to be able to see clients anymore. And so then there's going to be a loss. So it's a lose, however we look at it. That's so true. And I've been thinking about that a lot lately, as I was telling you when we were talking before that, you know, I made the decision because of things in my personal life to stop working one-on-one with clients, which I get tears in my eyes even saying it because it's so, it's such a hard change to make. And I think one of the things that could be really helpful in our discussion is that emotional part of making those kinds of positive changes for your your own well-being and the well-being of your practice and your clients. Because, you know, as I'm a group practice owner, so if I'm stretched too thin, then I'm not really available to my staff the way I need to be which gives them less support. And then that, you know, in turn, they would be less available for their their clients. And of course, my clients, if I'm struggling, you know, it impacts them, even if it's not, even if they're not fully aware of it consciously. You know, I think when you're worn down, it comes through in so many more ways than you even realize. It can be kind of like, it can be kind of nuanced and then also kind of obvious. Mm -hmm. When we started doing the, the burnout training, it was really about, what we were seeing with our own clients and also in Facebook groups. And we're seeing these particular patterns emerging and we're like, what is going on? And then we started kind of pulling it all together. It was like, oh, it's so obvious, but most of the people don't even realize that they're exhibiting the signs. Like, like we can see it so much earlier than they can. And then once they see it, they're like, oh, and then the tears start. And then they start to realize like, oh, I can start to to shift out of this. But I think so many of us are like in it that we don't even realize it. And so to be able to like take a moment and go, Oh, here's, here's where I am. And I didn't realize it. And that's okay. Cause it's been really, it's been really busy. It's been a lot to take in. It's been too much to process. So if you haven't been like taking a a personal account of like, Hey, how am I doing? (laughs) Like, how am I? Like you're pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, It is sort of insidious, but more so for the person who's experiencing it, because like you said, other people can notice what's different. Or I know a lot of people, a lot of fellow therapists have been saying to me when I shamefully disclose that I'm giving up my caseload and they said, I don't know how you've been doing all the things you've been doing for so long. And then I feel shame for that. You know, I'm like, you're right. I'm bad. I should have been doing better, you know, but it's. I mean, it's just all part of, I think, how vulnerable the whole process is. So 
I really appreciate the chance for us to talk about this. Like even while I'm sort of, I would not say I'm burned out now, but I'm going through that type of transition for my own well-being and it feels hard. Mm -hmm. And it's also a place where you can often be misunderstood Mm. and, and judged for that, which is so interesting, right? Because burnout comes from work. That's where it originates from, a system of your environment of work. That's what we're talking about here. And sis- and the system replicates within a larger system in our capitalistic society. And really, those judgments are people in effort trying to maintain the system. Why? Because main- maintaining a system, whether it be abusive or not, is sometimes more comfortable than taking that leap of faith and creating a new system that supports us because it's more unknown, it's in our control, and we don't trust ourselves, whatever it may be. So a lot of that judgment and that vulnerability is simply that you're feeling yourself pull away from the main narrative and doing something that is different and people don't understand it because they don't understand themselves how they've internalized some of these things that like you... In order, you know, the stories, in order to be a good therapist, you must always be seeing clients. Miranda has a story about how like she's still a therapist and she can share that. But, you know, like, or, you know, if you're going to do this, you have to have gone through that exact same thing in order to teach on it or consult on it and those kinds of things. We have the, or a caseload size. Well, what is full-time? What is part-time? All of these little things, we're not really being conscious. I love in our breath work, we do this breath work class and she's like, stay awake, be aware of where these things originate. Are they really you? Or are they part of a system that serves like not you, mm-hmm. but like it, it, it finances this economy instead of really like enriching your life and the life of your clients. And when we talk about how we, we think we're not impacting our clients. We, we show up, but it's just like that child who senses, that infant who senses the parents disagreeing and arguing and the parents like, oh, the baby's asleep. But yet we know that the baby's heart rate is increasing. Like our, if we are truly attuned with our clients, our clients will sense that from us. And so for you to pay attention and say, I'm going to change the system so that I can make a bigger impact while still preserving my life, that is countercultural. And so it is a very vulnerable thing, though it is the only way we are going to change the system is by those of us who are willing to take those risks. You have these, you know, all of us were trained in these dynamics where we you go through school and whether whether it's while you're in school or after as you're gaining hours where you're expected to have things like, oh, you're going to see 32 or 36 clients a week on a 40 hour week. You're going to have this amount of hours because they need that to have their grant or they need that to keep the doors open. And you start to feel like this is normal. Yeah. This is normal. And if these clients are not making good progress, you either feel shame about that or we blame on the client. We say, well, they're just not doing the thing. They're, they're being resistant or they're doing this. You know, we have all these things non-compliant. We have all these ways to try to like provide some ease and take some of the pressure off because there's a part of us that knows this doesn't work, right? This doesn't work. This isn't sustainable. And what we find when we look at the outcome research with therapists is that therapists that are in the top 20% that do really great work consistently, it's not based on years of experience. It's not based on the amount of training. And in fact, in some cases that can actually go down over time, right? Because we haven't created a system that really supports therapists and getting great outcomes and to be able to say no, because what happens in your internship or your externship when you say, this is too many clients, well, we're going to put you on a project improvement plan or like, hey, I'm having trouble keeping up. The records are taking longer than my time with clients. Oh, well, you just need to, to do better. There's something wrong with you. You know, we're only paying you per client. So if it takes you longer, it takes you longer, whatever that dynamic is. And so you see therapists that from the from the jump they're working outside of the hours unpaid often kind of secretly because that's the only way 
to, to make it work. work. And that, yeah. and I remember when I worked in the county, I used to tell my staff, if you do that, then you continue to be complicit and in, in telling the system that this is okay. They don't care. They don't care if you're working, you know, they don't want to know about it because they don't want to get in trouble. But as long as you get the work done, but we have to speak up and it's uncomfortable. So I imagine for you, like, and having been there too before, Laura, like it's uncomfortable to say like, I'm not going to see clients right now. My highest, I am better. I'm a better service over here. And it doesn't mean that the work that you're doing isn't good, but it's just sort of this holistic picture of honoring who you are and what you need in your life, especially your phase of life. Everyone is different. We all have different privileges, you know, and different demands on our time. And if we don't look at that whole picture and create businesses that fit within that life, then we're just going to replicate these broken systems, which are created to perpetuate the burnout. And so it's a proactive stance to say, I mean, you're being very proactive. Like I'm not burnt yet, but I, if I keep going, I will be what it, what a gift to yourself instead of waiting for you to be in the hospital. Like I have been before for you to say, Oh, I need to change something. Yeah. Like I, I, I own a group practice. I have four employees that I work with. I have a podcast that reaches 25,000 people a week and impacts therapists and clients and, you know, potential clients and traumatized individuals from all over the world. And I run this trauma therapist network that teaches and trains therapists on how to be great trauma therapists and how to take good care of themselves and sustain in this work. Like that's enough. And it, for those people that say it's not, they need to sit down because, <laughs> you know, like, really, do they deserve that kind of power and voice? And this goes for anyone listening. When you start saying like, gosh, this isn't working for me. And everyone says it should or shouldn't. And everyone's got their opinions. They don't live your life. And your body will tell you, listen to your body. It is more wise than your colleague, your therapist, your friend, your partner. It is your ultimate compass. Mm -hmm. And if your body's saying this does not work, that's who you need to listen to. Not the people that are on the outside in the periphery of what you're doing. And, I, and I'll say just what I know we're just talking over Laura. She's just smiling and nodding. That's around. okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm eating it up. Like, I'm like, yes, thank you. To talk about the idea too of like, when we think of body, sometimes we get it mixed up because we have the intuition place, which is this calm and centered knowing this peaceful part of the body. And then we also have this fear response in our body. And some of us have really been trained to kind of say, well, when I listen to my body, my body says terror. So that's a thing. And we have to kind of, fear is important. It's good information for us, but we need to get under the fear and into the intuition because that will let, let me know, am I scared because it's new and different or am I scared because that's, or, or is this just not the right thing? Mm -hmm. Because something can, can kind of like, I want to say like, feel okay in your body or like in your head, you'd be like, well, this makes sense. I could do the math of it. But your intuition might still be saying no, no. And when it says no, and when you feel that in your body, you feel that for me, it's like a tingling sensation kind of low in my body. If it's a no, it's a no. If it's a yes, it's a yes. There's no. And if it's a, I don't know, it's still a no. Yeah. <laughs> Until you have more. Interest. Yeah. And Kelly and I are so respectful of each other. It's like, if it's a no, if it's a no from one of us, it's a no from both of us, you know, and, and what we do in our business in particular, that like, hey, we want to make sure that we both feel really good. And it's a solid yes, as we move forward in anything that we do. But I think we don't do that as, as business owners, we replicate what our overwork, you know, teacher, our overwork clinical supervisor, usually the people that are doing the most work who are training our clinicians, who are supervising our clinicians, they're often not the people showing the, you know, the balanced life. No, they're perpetuating the yeah. oppression, I think. Well, because they've internalized yeah, it. Yeah, because they don't recognize it within themselves at all. They had, No one has stayed awake and thought, who does this really serve? Yeah. I think this other piece, going back to, we have this huge piece of shame for us as therapists when we do encounter, whether it's a physical or, or a mental health issue where we talk about like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm depressed. I have major depression or, oh, I have anxiety. Like, what does that look like for a lot of these therapists that are really struggling with depression and anxiety? 
for, for some of them, this is not traditional depression and anxiety. The only difference really, when you look at burnout and when you look at the symptoms of depression or you look at the symptoms of anxiety, the difference between what you diagnose is etiology. It's not based on symptomology. And because burnout is not usually something that people are assessing for, even though, right, the ICD-10 says, hey, burnout is the next big, huge issue. You know, people are, are Googling everywhere for like anxiety. I'm having trouble sleeping. Here are all these other pieces that are going on. But we just go, oh, depression, oh, anxiety, go to therapy, go and here's, here's a medication. If the etiology is the system, if the etiology is burnout from a system that's not sustainable, there is not enough medication and there's not enough therapy to change that physiological response. That physiological response is there to help you, not to hurt you. That depression you feel, that anxiety you feel is data to tell you that something, if, again, if this is coming from burnout, that something in this dynamic has to change. And until we change it, your body will keep upping the ante. And then I, I know in my case, it will just change it, right? So it'll go from like, oh, I'm feeling kind of anxious to like, oh, wow, now I have depression oh, wow, now I have an autoimmune thing. Cool. Oh, that got me to listen. Cool. Now my body will settle down. And then as soon as I let my life get off kilter, my body will give me information. Now I'm getting better at listening to it. And so the symptoms don't last as long and I'm able to shift it. But I have to see that the system that now that I'm a business owner, I create the system. Now, what did I do in my first couple of businesses or iterations? I replicated a system that was unsustainable and burned myself out. Running a group private practice has been a challenging and rewarding experience. And one thing that has made it so much easier is Therapy Notes. Therapy Notes makes billing, scheduling, note taking, and telehealth incredibly easy. If you're coming from another EHR, like I did, Therapy Notes makes the transition incredibly easy, importing your demographic data free of charge so you can get going right away. My team has found Therapy Notes very easy to learn, it's intuitive, the customer support is second to none. And that's one of the things that has kept me a Therapy Notes customer for several years now. Anytime I've needed to contact Therapy Notes for help with an issue I couldn't figure out on my own, I've been able to get through to someone and resolve the issue within 15 minutes, 99% of the time. Find out what more than 100,000 mental health professionals already know. Try Therapy Notes for two months absolutely free. Just click on the link in the show notes or enter the promo code chat at Therapy Notes dot com. Therapist, has this ever happened to you? You're sitting with a client in the thick of a therapy session, fully focused on the important work that's happening between you and the client. Suddenly, 30 minutes into the session, from down the hall, you hear the door to your office suite open. You and your current client were the only people in the suite, but now someone has come in. You're distracted from your current client as your anxiety shoots through the roof. Is it your new client who's scheduled to meet with you in 30 minutes? But your current session has 20 more minutes to go and you don't want to interrupt this client's process to go check on who's there. Are they wandering through the suite looking for a receptionist? Is it a delivery person here to drop off a package that needs a signature? Are they about to come knocking on the therapy room door? Is it your neighbor from across the hall dropping off a piece of your mail that was left at their address? You hear the door close. Did they leave? This has happened to me so many times over the years. As I anxiously anticipated the session with the new client, I would worry they were feeling anxious or abandoned because they weren't greeted when they got to the office. Now you don't have to worry, and your clients can relax too, knowing that you have a discreet, stress-free way for them to check in when they arrive for their appointment. The receptionist for iPad is a simple, inexpensive way to allow your clients to discreetly check in, to notify providers of a patient's arrival, and to ensure your front lobby is stress-free. The software sends an immediate notification to the therapist when a client checks in and can even ask if any patient information has changed since their last visit. Start a 14-day free trial of The Receptionist for iPad by going to thereceptionist.com slash therapy chat. And when you do, you'll also get your first month free when you sign up. Well, I like one thing that you're sort of saying, but not saying that because when we normally hear about burnout, I'm, it might have changed more recently, but usually people say once you're burned out, that's it, mm. done. Like you can't come back. Like burnout mm. is, you know, permanent type thing. Wow. And I mean, I like the paradigm that you're sharing because you're just 
saying that it's a it's a message and it, and it's a systemic issue and when you own your own business you have that create you can shift the system well so, i think i hear what you're saying i think it i think what you're saying is sort of true which is if you're in an agency yeah and, and you, you burn out that. and the system can't change like how do you come back to this unchangeable yeah. system that makes sense but that's not the same when you're a business owner it's not yeah. the same when you have agency when you can even, if you could exact change on that agency or on that nonprofit or, or whomever, I think there is room, but it's when the, when the issue that triggered it won't change. Mm-hmm. No, there's no coming back from that because it's a broken system. Yeah. It's like you're trying to go and ride the broken merry-go-round or the, that sketchy thing, <laughs> the, se- the sketchy like fair thing, right? Roller coaster like, or something. There's still no, like, it's still not a safe roller coaster. You're always going to feel anxiety getting on the roller coaster yeah. that's like tip into the side, you know, like that's never going to feel safe. And when you have your own business, you can look at the parts that you've internalized from those other jobs that you've had and things like that and decouple yourself from it and look at better ways within the context of your life and situation. And I think one of the things we talk about in our burnout training a lot is how how you respond to this kind of stress is it mirrors a trauma response, you know, whether you get angry and you're fighting or you want to escape and you're like, I'll just start another business, but you're still taking those internalized systems and replicating them. Or, you know, you fawn. So you just say yes to everything because it's just way easier than having boundaries saying no or, you know, like you get depressed, you get depressed and you just isolate. And I think we see more and more of that happening and it's not self-care. It's not bubble baths. Those are really nice things, but it's a systemic issue that has to change. The structure of the business has to change the way you do your work. That is where that's truly what's gonna like soften you from that crispy state. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Like what would it be like to have a, a a business and a life that you don't have to escape from, that you don't have to feel exhausted from, that you're not trying to take the weekend to try to recover every single weekend, or you're taking a vacation to try again, to try to recover. What if there was nothing to recover from? What if things were just in flow? And you did what you were really good at and you went home and you had energy for family and you did fun things on the weekend and, and, and things just happened and you never felt like, ugh, you never felt like wrung out. And not that you didn't have hard days, like we all have hard days, but where it wasn't the, the everyday part and pieces of the it, dread. the dread. And I think, I think especially for people who've experienced trauma before they experienced burnout, right? Whatever that coping strategy was when you were young or at that younger age is what's going to come up. And so it's going to feel really familiar and kind of normal, right? So you're going to be that people pleaser pat is what we call it, that fawning, where it's going to feel normal that you're doing all the things. It's going to feel normal that your caseload is out of control, that you don't know what full is for you, that you don't know how to refer someone out or to terminate someone when they're done with therapy that you don't know how to say, oh, oh, thank you for asking. Let me think about it. (laughs) You know, you don't even get a chance to pause. Like everything is a yes that you don't, that's going to be normal that you don't ask for help, that you feel like you have to shoulder it all on your own. It's going to feel very abnormal to say, oh, huh, what would it be like for me to figure out how many clients I can see a day where at the end of the day, like there's still time for me to move my body, to make dinner, to have a laugh, to connect with another human and I get a good night's sleep. And that the first client of the day and the last client of the day both had the same experience of me, that all of my documentation was done when I left for the day, that I just had space and there was nothing that I was carrying home with me. With not a laptop, not a to-do list, not an undone documentation that I'm feeling shame about or guilt or I'm trying to cut off from, that I don't have to sit on my phone and doom scroll or or try to do whatever that thing was. Like, I just, whew, it just feels good, you know? And that's just one of the ways, right, yeah. that trauma shows up. Well, you had me early in that description uh, thinking, like, do some businesses have that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, but I well, know that. I know so that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so we will. I mean, and let me just say, it is a there is a vigilance about this when it comes to warding off burnout, right? Because what the nature of the universe is constant change, constant exchange of energy, right? So you establish this business, you've got it figured out, you're in a little flow, and then, ah, someone passes away, or a divorce happens, or you get sick, and then it's an adjustment, but it's yeah. having those yeah. skills and that attunement with the self and your work to be able to adjust the system. And what happens is that when we are in other like jobs, they don't accommodate or flex for us, or there is no room. This is what it is. So we're bending around, making our burn out even worse. But the beauty of, again, having your own business is that you get to evolve and iterate over and over. And so what worked for me three years ago is not what's working for me now. I used to be the night out. I used to love to work in the evening. I am no good after 1.30 anymore. Like my best work is in the morning. I used to work out in the afternoon. I've hung out with Miranda so long now I get up in the morning though. She does work out a little later because of me, but we're meeting in the middle. You know, like I'm changing my body needs change all that. So my schedule has to change on and on. And so I think there's, if we think that we're reaching some sort of pinnacle state no, we're just in yeah. constant movement towards improvement and attunement. And I think, you know, going back to the way those other trauma things show up, like the escape hatch ends, what we call the people that are in that flight state, right? For the, for the running. There's a lot of people listening to podcasts just like this one who are like looking for and fantasizing about, oh, if I could only have an online course, if I didn't have to see clients, if I could do this or if I could do that. And it's because their day-to-day isn't sustainable, right? Again, they're not giving themselves permission to shift. And what we find is that they can go in, they can start six, six other businesses. It doesn't really matter. But until they figure out what would it look like to have a business and have a life that feels really good in it, they will replicate the same pattern in their course or in their membership or in their podcast, or in their whatever fill in the blank, in their group practice, in their, in the other pieces, like that ability to tap into intuition, to really be attuned with, with our body and our health, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, the the whole gamut of what we teach our clients, right? What we teach our clients that we do not give to ourselves that if you want to do something great, you want to do a course, you want to do a podcast, like we're for it. Obviously, like we've done all the things like we have, we've done probably the numerous adventures. <laughs> yeah, numerous ventures. I think we might have the best selling course in therapist history almost. It's mm-hmm. a little kind of crazy. In terms, think of revenue, yeah. in terms of revenue. I believe it. Yeah. But it, it, this other piece, right? of if you just do that to escape what you are in, it's not going to have the same impact as if you say, what would it be like for me to have a life that I don't need to escape from and create space for me to do this other thing because I want to, because it's creative, right. because it's fun, because my intuition says it's next, not because, oh, I have to go and work 70 or 80 hours a week for the next six months. And I have to have this course hit and make $50,000 so I can get rid of my caseload so that I can finally recover because I'm, I'm burnt to a crisp, you know, all those pieces. There's so many interesting ways that that shows up. And, and I think there's really well-meaning people out there who are marketing to these therapists in particular to say, Hey, we're going to save you from this with, you know, fill in the blank and people that are not self, and they don't realize that's what's happening. The people who are signing up don't realize that's what's happening. And then they get into it and they're like, I feel worse than I did before because that's not really what you need. And it's actually one of the reasons why we, we struggle sometimes about, we've thought about like, oh, we could do a, a course for therapists on how to build courses, but we'd rather do that with people that where we already know that their business is taken care of. Cause we know we're going to attract people who are trying to run and we're afraid that we're going to perpetuate the issues, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, it's like, 
maybe you did create your business a certain way and it was really sustainable and everything was going along well. And then like Kelly mentioned, life changed, something Mm -hmm. changed. Someone died, you got divorced, your child got sick or you got sick or something like that. And then it's not sustainable anymore. You know, so like, I think it's very compassionate to, like you were saying about iterations. And I think about that, like spiral staircase analogy that, you know, so at this season or at this moment in your life, it's working. And then at a different season, it needs to be changed. But for me, I think what happens is, well, and this, I said this before about the fawn response, like it's you dig in more. Like, I just got to do more. I just got to do more when, when stuff starts to go wrong instead of, you know, saying, okay, something has changed in my life. So what do I need to change so that I can still have well being even in the midst of what's different now? So I love the perspective that you're sharing and I, and the way you approach the whole quote, passive income. (laughs) For sure. We do have like a whole training. We can actually get a CE for it, for going through our burnout training um, on our website. If you want, you know, for people that want to dig more into this, but is the burnout training an ongoing, like it lives there and people can find it anytime or does it offer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, We do it live at certain times, but we have the recording and the CE that just lives there. Because it's for us, it's really important that it lives there. It's really important that therapists know that there's support. And I think a lot of people came to the training, not realizing even how burnout they were until they started seeing their descriptions. And, you know, and people are sometimes playful, you know, saying like, oh, I feel personally attacked. Like, why are you writing about me? You know, being silly. And then other people, I don't even know how many dozens of personal emails I've gotten saying like, I cried through your whole training. And, and I didn't show up realizing I was burnt out. I came for the CE or I came because you guys always do great trainings thinking I would get something out. And I didn't even know because I've just been so in it. I haven't taken a pause to look. And I think if you get nothing else from today, it's to like, take a pause, take a breath, take a moment, just be still and like really listen and if you can't even figure out where your intuition is, right? If that, and I, I can tell you, like, I was absolutely disconnected. I didn't even realize I was disconnected from my intuition. And when it turned back on, I thought something was kind of wrong initially. <laughs> I was like, something is happening that doesn't feel normal. Like this doesn't feel quite right. And it was like, oh, that's how long it's been that I've been disconnected because of trauma and things and pandemics and you know all of these pieces. Like I just didn't even know. And so, you know, tap into that intuition, like you deserve it and it's going to impact your clients. You may not think that this is about your clinical work, but I pinky, pinky, pinky promise, pinky toes and finger promise you that it will absolutely inspire the work in your clinical outcomes when you're taken care of. I want to speak just a sec to that whole piece of like, you know, people are sometimes shocked they didn't know they were burnt out. So I think oftentimes, again, I think that that's kind of the design of the system to make you think that there's something wrong with you and you need to figure out how to do your notes better and you need to figure out how to see 30 clients and it's on you when, or, oh, you're the one that's depressed. You're the one that's anxious. You're the one that's ADD or you're neurodivergent. So it's Mm -hmm. on you to figure out how to make it work. And all we're saying is stop burdening, burdening it all on you. Mm -hmm. and instead create a system that supports you where you are right now in this life that you are deserving of that and that that is one of the ways that again we change how we do mental health in this country what mental health looks like in this country what entrepreneurship being a business owner being a therapist means Mm -hmm. it does not have to mean this grind and hustle or whatever and if you can't do it then there's something wrong with you that's a very privileged stance coming from, you know, often I, like we always talk about bro culture and all this kind of stuff that you see in marketing and stuff. Very nice from a guy who's single with no kids, no autoimmune conditions (laughs) telling me you should be able to do it. There is nothing wrong with you as whoever is listening. There's nothing wrong with you. What does need to shift is a business that supports who you are. There may be something that's not coded right in the business structure. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that you're broken at Mm -hmm. all. 
and that the burnout is just a sign to tell you the system has to change. Not that you are messed up and incapable. Not that. It's saying that you need a system that plays on your strengths that allows you to be the best of who you are. I'm over here fist pumping. <laughs> like, yes, 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 yes. I'm like, preach, but in the I least know. creepy way. In the least <laughs> creepy way. Wow. I haven't talked to y'all for a long time and it's so good to hear from you again. It's like, I got to get back over there and use my lifetime membership of boot camp and <laughs> see what all the new stuff is because it was wonderful the first time around and it's in the second and the third and the fourth. But. <laughs> yeah, we don't even call it boot camp anymore. It's just called business school. Okay, yeah. business school. See, <laughs> right? I'm old school. I'm, I'm a, I'm a like an OG, early adopter. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it has been so beautiful talking with both of you today. I mean, really from my heart and I'm so I'm so glad that you were willing to come back to therapy chat and that you're doing what you're doing, because I have to say, when you're talking about the system and changing the system, it sounds like the part of me is like, wow, that's radical, you know, like, and then it's not, it's not radical. Like we can do that. But it, I think why it sounded radical to my ears is that it's like disempowered feeling of not you know, not being able to change the way things are. And we can, like people can change things for themselves and for everyone. So yeah. that's very hopeful. And I appreciate the way that you, you talk about all of this and everything y'all are doing. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for having us. Thank it's good you. to reconnect. Yeah. It's beautiful how you're impacting so many from the work that you do. And uh, we're just, again, so honored to know you and to yeah. be a little part of your story. Yeah. Thank you. You're a big part of my story. And thank oh. you. And I'm grateful for what you're doing. So where can everyone who's listening find all the good stuff that you're doing? Yeah, you can go to zinnyme.com, Z-Y-N-N-Y-M-E.com. We'll tell you how not to name your business in the future. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) And you can just click on free or you can click on get started. We have custom free materials for whatever stage of practice you're in, whether you're a solo group, whether you're launching from scratch, whether you're revamping or trying to go beyond the couch. Like we have all of that there waiting for you. Easy peasy organized. And then, you know, you can click on our podcast. We have one as well. And if you love listening to stories and, and learning that way, whatever you need. And of course we have our business school for therapists a lifetime program that is really changing the the business from the inside out, building and coding a business around your particular needs and how to actually do that and make it successful. We'll show you the ins and outs of all of that. Yeah. And I'll just say I joined in 2014. I still have access and it's, it grows and changes and evolves and more value is added all the time. So it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful offering that y'all have created. Thank you. Thank you to Therapy Notes for sponsoring this week's episode. I do love Therapy Notes. It's such an asset to my business and makes my job as a practice owner and a therapist much easier. Try it today with no strings attached and see why everyone is switching to Therapy Notes, now featuring ePrescribe. Use coupon code CHAT or click the link in the show notes to get two free months at therapynotes.com. Thank you to The Receptionist for iPad for sponsoring this week's episode. The Receptionist for iPad is the highest rated digital check-in software for therapy offices and behavioral health clinics used by thousands of practitioners across the country. The Receptionist for iPad is a simple, inexpensive way to allow your clients to discreetly check in, to notify providers of a patient's arrival, and to ensure your front lobby is stress-free. Start a 14-day free trial of The Receptionist for iPad by going to thereceptionist.com slash therapy chat. And when you do, you'll also get your first month free when you sign up. Thank you for listening to Therapy Chat with your host, Laura Reagan, LCSWC. For more information, please visit therapychatpodcast.com. 